course, for many of the people who lived through all of that, it will be one of the unforgettable moments of their lives. NBC's Ann Thompson was in the vicinity of the World Trade Center when the buildings began to come down. Ann? Tom, this is the view tonight down West Broadway. Smoke's filling the air where the two towers in building number seven stood. In the last hour, we have seen busloads of police, of doctors, and ambulance after ambulance go into that area to try to repair a city that's been mortally wounded by this attack. A direct hit that shattered New York City's confidence. Well, as soon as the first building collapsed, everybody made a mad dash to, uh, to just take over. And everybody just started running. I just happened to duck running to the post office. As soon as we got out of the train station, people were screaming and crying and yelling, and it was just total chaos. And the bottom of our building was blown out. For me, Ground Zero, Fulton, and Broadway, about two blocks from the World Trade Center, just as the South Tower crumbled. Hollywood could never imagine something like this. A tidal wave of smoke and debris came roaring down Broadway. I was standing on, at the corner of Fulton and Broadway. I ran into a building, ran between a column and a building at 195 Broadway, and pushed my face and my body into that building. For what seemed like five minutes, I was pelted with all kinds of debris. I crouched down, was coughing, trying to breathe. You couldn't get any air. The, the air was so full of smoke and dust. When it finally settled, I stood up. My glasses were covered with dust. Hours later, I'm still covered with dust. The building that I was in front of, 195 Broadway, the doors were gated shut. They opened the doors, let us in, and inside we were finally able to breathe. It wasn't easy. My eyes were filled with dust. My mouth was filled with dust. We, I was choking. The people I was with were choking. It was just absolutely horrific. All I could think of was, this is war. I just heard the rumble, and then, then a, a, I ran like hell, and there was a large wind coming. Down here, panic. Survivors flee by whatever means they can, fearing more destruction at any moment. At 10.30, I tried to leave the building, but as soon as I got outside, I heard a second explosion and another rumble and more smoke and more dust. I ran inside the buildings, the chandelier shook, and again, black smoke filled the air. Within another five minutes, we were covered again with more silt and more dust. And then a fire marshal came in and said we had to leave because if there was a third explosion, this building might not last. Everyone, please clear the corner. Palpable fear as people run through the streets, choking on dust and debris. Come on, let's go, let's go. We were, saw the building come down, we all ran, and the walkway held up to save like 40 or 50 of us that were right there. We were buried there, and then uh, cops shot out windows in the next building. The only thing that was in front of us was of, like these one-inch windows. The streets of the financial district covered with debris, in some cases ankle deep. Cars on fire, cars just turned by the force of the explosions. It was like something no one had ever seen. Panic, like smoke, heads uptown. Officials ordering precautionary evacuations of some of New York City's landmarks. This is an orderly evacuation of 30 Rockefeller Plaza. On the street, anxious commuters trying to call home, cell phone service dead. At Grand Central Station, travelers desperate to get out of the city. It's gonna take a long time, but you're gonna see mama and papa today, okay? Outside the station, a surreal scene. People buying postcards of the Twin Towers that no longer exist. As the day wears on, witnesses who survived the attack now face a new horror, searching for missing friends and co-workers. We can't account for all of our employees. We have, we're just in a, in a state of shock. The biggest, busiest city in the world, the attack revives fears of the 1993 bombing. Suddenly, nowhere in the financial district seems safe. Did you ever think this could happen again? No, I, I really didn't. I lived through the first one. After a tragedy so great, tonight a city comes together, searching for safety and comfort. Tom, now this area is more than just a business district. It is also where people live. And within the last hour, we have seen families bringing suitcases, crates carrying the fa their family pets to leave and to go elsewhere. They have no water, they have no gas, and there is also the fear that more buildings will collapse. 
The area is covered by police from all over New York City, and they tell us that they will be here through the night. Tom? All right, thanks very much, uh, NBC's Ann Thompson. But let me ask you, after you finally emerged from that building, what about other people who could not get into a building? What kind of casualties did you see? Tom, I, I will tell you that when I walked out of the building on Broadway and headed down towards Canal, it was, it was as if there had been a blizzard of debris and dust all over the street. I saw people running. I was walking. There were a lot of rescue people there, but there were people injured. We, I saw a woman being carried by two men. It was, it was like something I had, I had never seen anything like it. And all I could think of was just to get away from there, to get to safety. And as I kept walking to Canal Street, I could hear yet another explosion behind me. It was truly one of the most frightening moments I've ever lived through. Thanks very much, NBC's Ann Thompson. Any number of